Welcome back to the Midweek Update. Hey Mepham, welcome back to this week's episode of Midweek Update. Today we're taking a look at the new announcement that Mepham sophomores can go out for lunch and honoring the wife of the late Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. This and more as we take a look at what's going on this week on Midweek Update. I'm Riley Freed. And I'm Hannah Braxmar, and welcome back to the Midweek Update, the BMB show that brings you closer to the people and places in and around the Mepham community. So, Hannah, how does it feel to make your Midweek Update debut? Pretty good. It's kind of weird, though, how we're in different studios. Yeah, it's been working well on all other B&B shows, though. We can be socially distanced from each other and the crew, so we don't need to wear masks. That's true. And speaking of social distancing, that's been one of the district's main focuses throughout the school year so far. It was po probably a main factor in their decision to allow 10th graders to leave school during their off periods. Yes, this new rule is to help clear space in the cafeterias and allow more effective social distancing. BMB's Emily Yacht spoke to some of the students at Mepham to get their reaction to the development. The coronavirus pandemic has put a hold on many things, but for sophomores it has offered them the freedom of going outside during their off periods, which was taken away from the sophomores last year. Last year, the board and the district made a decision to um, not allow sophomores out, really for safety reasons. We had the capacity in our cafeterias to hold our sophomores, and we felt that you know, keeping them in the building uh, was really a priority alongside the, the freshmen. Apart from a few stragglers, this rule was followed, and the class of 2022 complained of loss of freedoms, tight spaces, and overbearing crowds of freshmen for the portion of the year spent in the school. I did not like not being allowed out because I felt like I was very stuck inside all the time. I had freshman lunch, so trying to find a table to at freshman lunch is horrible. They are all there and you cannot find a space to sit. After the short half year hiatus of students leaving the building, coronavirus hit and new rules need to be put in place to ensure the safety of students. This year, you know, with COVID restrictions and with the six feet separation that we have in our cafeterias, um, we, we felt that it, we didn't have sufficient capacity to hold the entire 10th grade district-wide. At Methum, it wasn't really a problem, but if, you know, we want to make sure that the decisions are made uh, for the benefit of all three high schools. Contrary to what outsiders would believe, juniors have spoken and have told us that they have no problem with a new rule for sophomores. I think that it is the sophomores' right to be allowed out because it's just always been a thing, and I just think everyone should get the right to do it. It's not about us now, it's about like the other kids. As for next year, the answer of whether sophomores will be allowed out is unclear. At this point, there isn't an indication, but once I get more information and uh, direction from the district, we'll move forward accordingly. No matter what decision is made in the future, it is important to understand that every decision made is made with the students in mind. From BNB News, I'm Emily Yucht. Thanks, Emily. I, for one, am really excited about this decision. Well, of course, us sophomores are excited. I'm not sure about most of the juniors, though, since they didn't get to leave as 10th graders. Yeah, you're right. But there are some things that non-sophomores can get excited for, like the return of sports, sort of. Here's BNB's Connor Ward to explain what Riley meant by that. Hi, I'm Connor Ward, and this is your midweek week in Melbourne Sports, and this is a big week in sports in Belmore, America as we at BNB can report that the district has approved an intramural sports plan that will go into effect in the days ahead. Students at all three of the district's high schools will be able to take part in an intramural program for all of the fall sports, tentatively scheduled to begin on October 5th. Students interested in participating should reach out to the fall sports coaches for more information. BNB Sean McClellan will have more details on the intramurals on the morning announcements this Friday. This week also marks the debut of BNB's Sports Talk. Join new hosts Tom Morrow and Lily Yepes as they discuss the sports world here at Mepham and meet this month's Facing the Case, John Morris. Matt Mano also introduces the fastest minute in sports. The Matt Mano Minute, check it out later this week on BNB. Till next midweek, I'm Connor Ward. Thanks, Connor. Hopefully, real sports seasons can return soon, but this is a great substitute in the meantime. Exactly. As the pandemic continues, athletes should stay tuned to BNB shows like Sports Talk, The Morning Announcements, and of course, Midweek Update. 
to hear the latest on the status of school sports. People should also tune in to see our newest midweek update segment, Decision Definitions. Today, B&B's Charles Lushinsky is going to talk about the term debate. Election Day 2020 is on November 3rd, and as teenagers, we're being bombarded with tweets, Instagram posts, TikToks, and Facebook posts. But we're teenagers, so we're not on Facebook. But they're out there, and they're all about the election. With all those social media posts, there is a lot of misinformation out there. We're not here to correct the misinformation on BNB's decision definitions. We're just going to try to explain some of the terms that you're seeing and hearing. If you want to learn what the candidates think about these things, the candidates have websites full of information. We're just going to explain the terms. Today's term, debate. Historically, presidential debates have large impacts that can change the race, and it's no different this year. Although this election cycle is far from normal, there will still be debates between the Democratic and Republican nominees this year. What is a debate? Well, it's a formal discussion on a particular topic in a public meeting or legislative assembly, in which opposing arguments are put forward. It's honestly probably the biggest moment in the presidential race. It's a crucial 90 minutes where the major presidential nominees make their case to the American people to elect them as the leader of the country. Debates have been in every election cycle since 1976 and have been very effective. There's always a moderator, usually a journalist from a major news outlet. These debates take place almost always three times in the election cycle, usually at a university around the country. There is also one vice presidential debate that is nearly identical to the format of the presidential debate. The debates are one of the most powerful tools to help Americans decide who to vote for. The debates are used to see, are used to see how the candidates stand on policy like the economy and taxes, or how to handle crises like wars and how to pursue foreign relations. It shows what you can expect under four years of a candidate's administration. Televised debates started in 1960 when a University of Maryland student actively attempted to get Richard Nixon and John F. Kennedy to a one-on-one -on -one debate with a moderator. And there you have it, presidential debates throughout their history have been highly consequential and can tip an election one way or another. For Decision Definitions, I'm Charles Lachinsky. Thanks, Charles. I'm glad that we can help to find some terms that people might not know leading up to the election. Yeah. Last week, Charles talked about the Supreme Court, so go check that out if you missed it. The reason he brought up that topic is because of the recent passing of Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, BNB's Emily Rosenberg went into depth about her life and career to honor the late justice. Did you always want to be a judge, or more exorbitantly, a Supreme Court justice? School children who visit me at the court, as they do at least weekly, ask that question more than any other. It is a sign of huge progress made. To today's youth, judgeship as an aspiration for a girl is not at all outlandish. A woman synonymous with the fight for equality between genders, she notoriously never backed down from a fight, earning her the nickname the Notorious RBG. Ruth Bader Ginsburg was on the federal bench for 27 years. In 1993, she became only the second woman ever to serve on the United States Supreme Court. She was a voice for gender equality, women's interests, civil rights, and liberties. It was extremely hard for her to be taken seriously as a woman at Harvard Law School, where she was one of only nine women attending at the time. To make matters even worse, she also had to take care of her one-year-old daughter while her husband underwent cancer treatment while she was in law school. But despite this, she graduated tied for first in her class. Upon graduating in 1959, Ginsburg was recommended for clerkship with the Supreme Court Justice Felix Frankfurter, but was denied because he was not ready to hire a woman. Out of 12 law firms where she interviewed, only two gave her a follow-up interview. But she was eventually hired, and the rest is history. As a young lawyer, she attempted to secure rights for all people. As a Supreme Court Justice, she was well known for her dissenting opinions and landmark decision cases, such as 
United States v. Virginia, where she authored the court's opinion, which struck down the Virginia Military Institute's male-only emissions policy. During another landmark case, she wrote a dissenting opinion on equal pay legal claims, arguing it should become easier for employees to file and win claims over equal pay. This would eventually become law. Although she has passed away, Justice Ginsburg's impact on the court cannot be mistaken. In her own words, We aim to ensure that when we leave the court, the third branch of government will be in as good shape as it was when we joined it. We thank her for her more than 27 years of service. For BNB, I'm Emily Rosenberg. Thanks, Emily. Justice Ginsburg was a very influential woman with an important career. Wait, did I already thank Emily before? Different, Emily. Apparently, we have a few here in BNB. Good to know. Well, that's it for this week's midweek update. We'll be back next week with all new stories from around the BMCHSD to bring you inside the parts of the community we don't always get to see. Until then, I'm Hannah Braxmeyer. And I'm Riley Freed, and we'll see you all next midweek. <laughs> <laughs>